This screencast will cover a basic introduction to Wraith, a screenshot comparison tool created by the developers at BBC News. Wraith uses either PhantomJS or Slimer.js to create screenshots of different environments and then creates a diff of the two images. The affected areas are highlighted in blue. Wraith is written in Ruby, so you'll need to have Ruby set up on your machine before starting. Installation is through the command line. Take a look at the Wraith GitHub page for more details on that. I already have Wraith installed on my computer. We can look at the directory created when you install Wraith. The main items we want to focus on are the configs folder, the shots folder, and then the snap.js file. We'll start off by looking at configs. Config starts with three different files, config.yaml, config.nojs.yaml, and then testconfig.yaml. Config.yaml and testconfig.yaml are exactly the same. Config nojs.yaml uses an alternative JavaScript file to view a page without any JavaScript turned on. Let's take a look at config.yaml to get started. YAML is a markup language that makes reading configuration files and creating configuration files a little bit easier on the eye. It's kind of like Jade, if you've ever used the Jade markup language in place of HTML. Uh, right now we're going to keep everything as default and we're going to walk through each section. The first part is the snap file. This is basically a set of directions telling Wraith how to take pictures of the website. We'll talk about this in a moment. The next option is the directory file. This is where you're going to store your screenshots. This is helpful if you have multiple websites that you want to test uh, all in the same directory or multiple sections of your website because every time that Wraith gets run it will overwrite any content inside of this directory. The next section is pretty important. It's the domains that you want to test. In this example it tests the English and Russian versions of the BBC website. Usually you're going to want to compare the same website but a test and a production version. One of the nice things about Wraith is that it makes testing responsive designs very easy. You can see here we have five different screen widths, all the way from handheld to widescreen. The last section is paths, and these are the different pages that Wraith will take screenshots on. So it's going to take a screenshot of the home page at the five different resolutions for the two domains, and then it will take a screenshot of the UK index page for the five different screen widths for the two different domains. Let's go ahead and run this and see what it creates. Since I have everything installed, all I have to do is run rake. That is the Ruby build command. This is going to take a little bit of time, so we'll go ahead and fast forward. Okay, Wraith has finished processing the screenshots, and it took about three minutes to run this. When you're dealing with any sort of screenshot regression tool, it's going to take a lot of time to load the websites in the browsers, take the screenshots, compare them, uh, especially when you're dealing with very large screenshots. But that time is worth it because you get a nice screenshots directory. Uh, in it you have your all of your pictures that are taken, all the screenshots that are taken. Um, it has text files that contain information on, uh, I believe this is the number of bytes that have changed between the two, the two images. Um, you'll also get the diff image, which if we look at here is a very long image. It takes a screenshot of the entire page, which is really nice if you want to get the full view. Everywhere there's blue is content that's different from the other site. So you see a lot of differences here, mainly because we're looking at a different site. Um, and then the original images as well, if you'd like to look at them. It's organized by the page that you took the screenshot of, and they have the resolution prepended to the images themselves. The really nice feature of Wraith is that it creates this gallery.html file for you. Let's go ahead and look at that. This is a website that is created that has the two web pages side by side and the diff next to it. So what is really helpful with this is if you see any problems, it's very apparent. You can click on the diff or the image to get the full size screenshot. You can do the same thing with the original screenshots as well. You see we have screenshots for each resolution and for each page itself. So that's the initial Wraith 
screenshot execution with the default config file. Not so helpful here where we have two different websites. So let's go ahead and take a look at an actual website for a better example. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new config file from this default config file. I'll go ahead and save it as config underscore Kevin Lamping. I'm going to be testing my homepage against a local version of it. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at what snap.js does. This is basically the Node.js code that you would write to run the screenshot tool. In this example, it's using phantom.js, but if we wanted to use Slimer, we could write our own snap.js file using Slimer or any other tool that we'd like to use that comes up along the way. Uh, it sets a few things, uh, taking in the viewport width that we get from our YAML file, um, and then it also sets a user agent. You can see here we can add cookies. This is very helpful if you have a login and you need to do a fake login to a site, that sort of thing, so that you can log into a site without actually having to script that in. Very helpful in that instance. Um, it basically goes through, opens the page, the URL that gets passed in, it checks to see that the status is equal to success, and then it waits three seconds for the page to load, takes the image, and uh, then exits out of Phantom. So this, this script will get run over and over and over again. Uh, we are gonna change our timeout to 5,000 milliseconds because my website has a lot of big images and sometimes they're a little slow to load. So by upping this to 5,000, we increase the chance that the images are gonna be loaded in time. This does cause the script to run a little bit longer, so you don't want to put in a very large number because then your script will take way too long to run. For our purposes, 5,000 should be enough. We'll see what comes out. I'll go ahead and save this as snap underscore KL, and then come back to my YAML file and update that to use snap KL. And that's simply just because I updated that timeout. I'm also going to update the shots directory to shots KL, and then I'm going to change my two domains to live and local and then I'll update the URL and I'll just say this is at localhost at 8000. I do have a semi-responsive design but uh, it doesn't have that many screen widths so I'll go ahead and just take two 320 and 1024 and then uh, I'm going to want to change my path URLs as well my website's kind of different in that it doesn't have any real sub pages. It's just a series. Uh, it's it's using software called Timeline JS, and if you've ever seen it, it's just like a timeline. And the way you access the different parts of a timeline is through the hashtag. So for the home page, that will be pound zero. For page one, that will be pound one. And I'll just need to keep going through and add each page separately. I've actually written a little bit of JavaScript to do this for me. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in right now. Okay, I've got it pasted in. You see I have 40. This isn't an uh, ideal way of having to paste in URLs, but uh, it works for now. What you could do is crawl your site first, and then from that generate these URLs for you. Uh, that's probably a better way if, if you have a lot of URLs that you want to test, but don't want to have to write all those URLs out by hand, especially if they change often. I'm going to go ahead and save this and open my terminal back up. Now, I don't want to run both of my configs. I just want to run this Kevin Lamping one. So I'm going to do rake and then config and pass in the name of my config file. This will ignore every other config file in my configs directory. If I had just run rake, it would have run the BBC default config file and this one, which I don't want to spend the time running the BBC one again. I just want to run this one. Go ahead and start that off. You see it's processing, and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, our screenshots have finished being built, and our comparisons have been made and the shots underscore KL directory has been created. She has another gallery.html file. Now it has a whole lot more folders inside of it. These are all the different pages it took pictures of. Um, this took a substantial time longer because we weren't comparing two pages, we were comparing 40. Luckily we were only comparing two screenshot sizes. 
Luckily, we were only comparing two resolutions, so it didn't take quite as long. But uh, once you get a lot more pages, this can take a very long time, especially at a lot of different resolutions. So this screenshot comparison tool, you'll probably want to run um, outside of your normal development process as part of just everyday regression. Um, you probably don't want to put it in front of too much of your development work. Let's go ahead and look at the gallery page. Uh, you see on the left side we have links to all the pages that we created um, and then again the two comparison shots. Uh, the 320 view looks kind of funny. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up. The reason it looks funny is that the the height of the page didn't change. It was still the same height but the width was shrunk down. So there's a lot of white space when you're looking at it at that size. Uh, normally it wouldn't take up that much uh, vertical space so we're just going to kind of leave it as is. Um, you see here there are no differences between my local and live server uh, for the very first several pages. Um, once we get into page 13 we actually see uh, a diff coming up and that diff occurred because the image didn't load in time. Um, you see it's highlighted everything in blue that's changed um, and so this really isn't a actual problem with the site having a, a with the site having a regression. It's simply an artifact of our page not loading uh, fast enough, which is probably something that I should fix outside of the CSS regression testing. Uh, you see it happens a few more times throughout the page. Uh, again, we can fix that either by getting better performance, which would be preferred or we can up the timeout to something like seven seconds to make sure that everything just has a little bit longer to load. So that's Wraith. You see it's very helpful for an easy quick regression of your visual design. Um, it's really nice because it creates a, a very friendly website to compare those images and view them. Um, a lot of it is manual as far as comparing them. You do have the file that gets output that says how many bytes have changed so you can put like a threshold if this many bytes change then we want to do a red flag and throw an email or something so that you can have this regression run every day and then just kind of compare to the previous day make sure things don't change that would probably be really useful if you rely on third-party widgets that you don't want to test manually every day but maybe you want to make sure that they're visually displaying consistently every day you can do that sort of thing um, the drawbacks are that it, it does take a full screen image shot so if you have content that changes a lot this really isn't going to work well for you. Say you have a blog page then you're going to get a lot of red flags. There are other tools out there that handle that for you. Uh, no scripting as far as browser scripting that means I can't go to a page log in click a button do a hover that sort of thing that's not built into it although with that snap.js file you may be able to try customizing that if you need to. Um, and then the other drawback is that you do need to have two sites that have the same content. Uh, otherwise you're going to get content issues like you see on the BBC homepage that they have in their demo. Hopefully you can get some use out of this. Again it's for a quick easy test that you want to get running and um, try it out and let me know what you think.